Hello friends, I'm Ashish Tabari, founder and CEO of Axomize, and to our new listeners, welcome. For our old ones, you're very welcome back again. So we have a couple of exciting things to announce. So we are doing a webinar, uh, which is uh, done in uh, partnership with uh, Open Hardware. And Open Hardware have a channel on YouTube, Open Hardware TV, and we're doing a webinar to talk about the formal verification work done by Axiomize. And this would be on um, Thursday. So if you want to register for it, it's completely free. Please go online and register. Get in touch with me at ashish.dabari at axiomize.com. And I can tell you where to register if you don't already know. Another cool event is coming up in December which is the RISC-5 Summit. This is an annual event. In the previous years, this has been attended by 1,500 to 2,000 people. Um, it's a great collection of speakers under one roof. And we will be talking about coverage-driven formal verification in the context of RISC-5 processors. So this brings me nicely to the topic of today's podcast. And we're going to talk about what is scenario coverage in formal verification. So before we talk about what it is, let's understand why we are even having that discussion in the first place. So we are signing off designs with formal verification every day. I mean, we in Axiomize and a lot of you who do formal verification in different organizations, you do that. And as we know, formal verification is exhaustive. What does exhaustive mean? Exhaustive means all combinations of input values and states are examined during verification. And if a property proves, then it is a valid behavior of the design under test. But what if a designer or an architect or a non-formal verification engineer asked, tell me what has been proved? Can you explain what? So in traditional cases, we provide the requirements and provide assertion code to show what has been verified, to give an indication of what kind of behavior was verified. But then the follow-on question comes. Did you check if these behaviors were also covered by a check? Now, you see, the questions are about scenarios. We have to be convincing in our way that we know what has been verified, what scenarios were covered, and the answer is not always straightforward, at least not traditionally. So for example, on CVE4, the processor that we've been formally verifying for the open hardware group, we recently proved that load and store unit works correctly for all variants of loads and stores. So load byte, load half word, load word, align, misalign. No matter when they are issued, no matter how many times they are issued, no matter what instruction sequences were ahead of them or behind them, they would work correctly, okay? But here is the problem. We have examined a complete set of behaviors, but how can we articulate this to a person who's asking these questions about a specific scenarios? Unless we generate some scenario coverage information, we cannot answer this question. For example, what is the relationship between illegal instructions and load and stores? Are illegal instructions going to be raised for an illegal decode of load and store? Are they going to be raised for the correct reason at the correct time? For every illegal instruction that is actually raised, exceptions are raised. Are we actually going to raise exceptions for all kinds of load and store requests? These are the interesting questions for which we need to provide the answers. So for example, the RISC-5 ISA says, if a processor is making misaligned uh, load and store address lookups, then an exception could be raised. However, there are exceptions. For example, in this case, in the case of CVE4, it doesn't actually raise in uh, exception codes because the code supports misaligned lookups. Now, have we verified that exceptions are not raised? Can we prove this? Can we show that it can't be, right? These are the things that are valuable to the person who wants to understand what has or hasn't been verified. Have we stalled the pipeline during checking from the memory side? What was the relationship of the stalling on the memory side versus the committing of the 
loads in the stores, what was that relationship, right? Typically, any simulation-based verification would answer these questions through a functional coverage model. This has been a well understood, well known method for sign off for simulation. Despite the fact that a stimulus in simulation is non exhaustive by definition. Now, we may not have that problem in formal verification, but we still have to provide the same answers that people in simulation based verification care about. This is why we invested time in building this new ISA coverage analyzer solution in our app core formalizer as a fully automated formal verification coverage solution to address the problem of scenario coverage. All you have to do is ask. And how do you ask? In ISA coverage analyzer, we have two components. The first one automatically provides answers on commonly asked questions, some of which we discussed, for example, the behaviors of illegal instruction stalls, back-to-back -back instructions. And the other is the one where we actually want you to ask these questions on a more directed basis. So for example, you might want to know, can I have multiple occurrences of a subtraction instruction? And then followed by that, could I issue an AND instruction followed by a store word, for example? And would an AND instruction work correctly under the sequence where a subtraction instruction is ahead of it and a stored word is behind it? So you specify these scenarios of time delays and what instruction combinations you would like us to address and answer in a very simple table in Excel or CSV format. And then we do the hard work inside our app to generate the properties, assertions to formally prove that those behaviors can always happen and covers to show you evidence of what waveforms were possible. If some of these behaviors were unreachable, then we will show you that they are. This is, would be a valuable information. For example, if we were issuing two back-to-back -back misaligned stores, and if the point of issue window is too, sh too short, you might actually see some interesting unreachability scenarios, which may not actually happen if you were issuing aligned stores and loads. So these are the different specific variations and how the instructions which have a well-defined semantics in a sales specification or, or, a, or a risk 5 specification may or may not have been implemented in the way that a verification guy expects it to. And this alignment needs to happen between what a designer interpreted it to be and what a verification person interprets it to be. And does it match with the interpretation of the architect and the actual specification itself? So on CVE4, we played with a random list of specification spreadsheets, basically many different combinations of instruction into leaving. And you know, in within two hours or four hours, depending on how long the spreadsheet is, we could end up having the complete outcome in a formal tool, proofs and waveforms. We can tell you precisely what is the stall penalty of the pipeline. We can prove and show you if data forwarding works correctly on relevant instructions where register sharing is happening. Though the permutations to cover all possible instruction combinations, let's say even for 40 user instructions would be quite a huge number in the range of thousands, we can still generate a sensible list of specification combinations and at least make sure that each instruction has been tested under a unique scenario. And we can get that formal analysis done on that, right? So for example, we discovered in the case of decoders and CVE4, they have a very interesting asymmetry, something that was perhaps known to the designers. It became apparent in one of the conversations with the designer that he knew this was the case. This was never documented anywhere. We discovered that if we issue back-to-back -back stores to the memory, right? We can, can't always send them too soon back-to-back -back for misaligned excesses. There are lots of different uh, Mandation. So, for example, if you issue a branch of equal to, um, you can't issue them back to back, right? Conditional branches. And this is an artifact of how conditional branches are decoded and then the uh, execute and the decode signals in the pipeline are held low. We were able to prove that actually they would be held low for one cycle, no, for two cycles or three cycles. So, that kind of precise behavior is important to know. 
because it is not just adequate to say we prove the behaviors that were mandated by a typical instruction set architecture. It's important to know how these behaviors did manifest, what was it that was obvious and what was it that was hidden. And coverage is there to answer these questions, to understand whether our verification test pinch is adequately constrained or over constrained, are we missing the bugs, but also through scenarios uncover that actually different things are possible. To be able to find out a lot of the undocumented design behavior through a coverage model, especially through scenario coverage, this is valuable because this can expose security trojans, vulnerabilities in the hardware, taking us well beyond the normal functional verification requirement. So guys, this is an exciting topic. We take coverage very seriously. And as I said, um, we'll be talking about it in the summit next month and in the Open Hardware TV show coming up in two days time. For us, coverage is a very, very important way of addressing verification completeness. It's a multi-dimensional perspective that we have. And scenario coverage is just one of that dimension that I talked about. If you're interested in understanding how these things have been applied on processors at a larger scale, come and talk to us. We'll give you a demo. We'll show you what we're doing. And perhaps we could help you in your work. Thank you very much for listening to us today. And we will be back again. See you soon. Mm -hmm.